Hey, what's up? It's Chris. I'm gonna show you how to animate this high-speed flying bird using shape layers and path keyframes in After Effects. We'll be covering things like path animation, animating on twos, looping expressions, how to create the illusion of speed, how to create a fake camera animation, a few custom shortcuts, and all sorts of goodness. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I did is I created a composition that is 1080 by 1080, 24 frames per second, six seconds long, and I'm called this PC for pre-comp bird. And then I also dragged in this um, photo I took from this book called Cartoon Animation. Um, check it out, I'll link in the description for this book. It's got all sorts of good breakdowns of, uh, how do I do this? Good breakdowns of animation here. Um, but the page of on birds has some nice key poses here, so that's what we're gonna be referencing. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw out the body of this bird. And I'm gonna kinda go with a cool graphic, uh, sharp angle style here. So, ooh, some gnarly strokes in there. We'll fix that. Um, I'm gonna get rid of the stroke and I'm gonna make this white. So let's see, here's the tail of the bird. Let me tell you a tale of a bird. No. Nope. Um, I'm just gonna pull these little points around until I get something that kind of feels like a like a falcon or something with a, a beak and like a big head. All right, that's a nice body. We're gonna name this layer body because it's his body and that makes sense. Now I'm gonna start drawing out this first pose. Um, the wings are kind of down like this. Uh, on a new layer, I'm going to just use my pen tool here and click, and that creates a new layer since I have nothing selected. I'm gonna draw out a little wing shape. Just drag this around until I like it. Um, I'm gonna go back into the body and double click to grab this point. And I'm gonna pull it in so it's kind of around there. So it's kind of tricky because we're working with um, all the same color. So it's it's kind of tough to get that silhouette, but I think working in the same color really makes you build a silhouette that's readable. Already you can start to see a bird. So we're gonna do this one wing at a time. The front wing here is what we're starting with. And then we're actually gonna duplicate and offset the other wing. So we only have to animate this one time. And that'll kind of save us a little bit of time. All right, so we got our bird body. We got the first pose of the wing. Now I'm gonna to go to both of these and I'm going to click the search bar, type path, that is not path, path. And I'm gonna go ahead and set a keyframe. Now we're gonna uh, animate this on twos. So I wanna to toggle these as hold keyframes so it won't interpolate between the different keyframes. Animating on twos means we're gonna set a keyframe every two frames instead of every single frame. So that means 12 frames per second, which means half the work. But it's also pretty common in animation. It gives it a cool, like, hand-drawn style. A little more organic, because it doesn't look like it's been calculated by a computer. I'm gonna go two frames ahead, and I'm gonna, let's see, it looks like this next frame, we actually extend the wing a little bit. So we weren't quite at the bottom of the the wing flap. So I'm gonna drag this. Maybe I'll grab these. Um, and this is why I like animating with path. Uh, even though it might be kind of weird, I like animating with path keyframes. Just because like it's easier sometimes to drag these points around and just make these little adjustments than to um, draw out a whole nother layer. Especially if you're going for this very detailed, or not detailed, very like clean line, clean edges. The amount of layers it would take to draw this out um, and then to clean it up and to get those edges looking really sharp, that would just take me a lot longer than just clicking and dragging some points around. So already we got two frames down. So as you can see on frame three, the wings are starting to flat back up. So, let me kind of draw what that could look like. Let's go forward two frames, um, page up and page down. You can go forward and back. And then if you don't have a keyboard that's that big, if you hold command you can and your arrow keys, you can go back and forth 
frames. So little pro tip. Let's draw this lifting of the wings frame. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these and maybe rotate them, pull them this way. Let's drag this up. Go up. One of the fun things about this process is you're gonna see how crappy an animation that is in an early phases looks. And then how good it looks. Oh yeah, <laughs> that looks so bad. It's perfect. All right, next frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip this frame because I think I want this to be a little faster. I'm gonna go up to maybe this frame five or six and draw a position where the wing is already kind of up here and maybe maybe not all the way up, kind of rotate it here. But I, I want this to be a little faster of a flap cycle, wing flight cycle. I don't know what you call it. I want to keep that silhouette clean. Um, so we have boom. Oh yeah, you're starting to feel it there. He's lifting up the wing. And now um, I'm probably going to go straight up to this, the six frames. So this is going to be the peak of the the wing flap. If you're playing with keyframes and paths and you feel like things are just weird and, and you're like double clicking a lot and dragging things around a lot, unfortunately, it's the way it goes. I don't have a solution for you. Paths in After Effects are a little rickety, crickety sometimes. They're a little funky. If you use them a lot, you can get pretty comfortable in it. And it's not that bad. So here I'm just, again, tweaking these paths to get what I want. As you can see, we're getting cut off. So I'm going to drag the layers, not the paths, down more. So this uh, body is more centered in the frame, which is probably what we should have done at the beginning. But, you know, tutorials with Chris, they're raw, they're messy, and they're full of knowledge. Cool, so we got the top of the flap there. Now we're gonna go ahead two frames and so the reason I, I cut out those middle frames is I want the flap up to be faster because there's less resistance in moving the wings up and then moving down, the bird is lifting his body. So he's pushing the air down, lifting his body. So I, I picture there being just a tiny bit more resistance. So we're gonna add one more frame go forward two frames and I'll set a position that's just a slight modification of this one. Uh, rotate this. I need to stop saying um so much. Maybe I'll have my editor, who's probably going to be me, cut that out. Oh no. Again, it's all about just pushing those keyframes around until you get the shape that you're looking for. When, you know, when you're following this tutorial, I would recommend not trying to copy exactly what I do. Um, if you want to copy it the first time through just to learn this technique, that's totally cool. But if you really want to want to develop this, try to adapt it a little bit. Maybe instead of doing this type of bird, design your own style of bird or I don't know, do a, do something else. What's something else that you could animate? I got no ideas right now. I'll try to think of some. So I dragged those path keyframes around a little bit more. And I'm doing this downward passing keyframe. It's a muddier silhouette, but I think you can tell the wing is on its way down. I'm gonna go back to the first keyframe. I'm gonna, just gonna rotate this a little bit. Because if we go here and we're gonna go to frame 13 and hit N to end the, uh, the work area, and we'll press the space bar, oh yeah. That was pretty good, actually. Not gonna lie. Here is the magic. So before we go on, I'm gonna grab this path, and then I want this to loop. So there's this expression that Dan Eberts came up with um, that's super insanely genius. I don't really know how it works, but it, you know, magic or something. I'm gonna go to aereference.com. In case you didn't know, AE Reference is the site that I've been building that I'm just kind of cataloging my favorite expressions hit slash to search and type loop path, there we go. 
loop path keyframes. So this is the expression. Um, I'm trying to document these. It's a little messy, so if you find something in here, just let me know and be patient because I'm still working on it. <laughs> uh, copy this to clipboard. I'm gonna go back, option click on the stopwatch and paste the expression. So now you can see we have a looping wing flap. This is super cool because you can't use a normal loop out expression on path key, uh, path property. So we got this. All right, so what's next? Let's go ahead and duplicate this and we're gonna call it back wing, control or command D to duplicate. I'm gonna drag it behind the body and I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna offset it a little bit and change the color to a light gray so that we can see already, you know, that's perfect. That bird looks super realistic. Just kidding. I'm gonna hit Y and we can drag this anchor point to be more in line with where the, the wing would rotate. This is not gonna be an accurate way to do this, but again, we're, we're kind of doing this frame by frame. Um, so we can be a little, a little brute force with it. We don't have to make everything super clean. So I'm going to rotate this to get it a little more of an offset. And then the problem is that's going to make it look worse up here. So then I'm going to hit U, which brings up our path keyframes. And, oh, here's, here's a little thing. If you've applied the loop path expression, you cannot edit the path keyframes. So that gets really annoying because you're like, why doesn't this work? Why can't I click this? Well, if you hit this little equal sign, it will disable the expression. You can edit your keyframe, and we're gonna do that on this one. And then once you click that button again, it will re-enable the loop, and you'll be back to that looping goodness. All right, we're gonna scrub through here. We gotta update this one too, and cool. So let's re-enable the expression. That's already looking way better. Okay, so one of the things that's missing is we have no up and down movement. So when a bird flies, it goes up and down. I don't know if you knew this, but it does. So I'm gonna parent both of the wings to the body. I'm gonna hit P and click on position, separate dimensions. I've mapped this shortcut to Shift D. So that's a pro tip, save you a bunch of time. Shift D, separate dimensions. You can change that by going up here, edit, keyboard shortcuts, separate dimensions, and then you can add Shift D right here. I should probably make a video on my favorite shortcuts. If you want that, let me know. I'm gonna scrub somewhere in the middle here to where we have the bottom of our wing flap. I'm gonna set a Y position, then I'm gonna go to the top of the wing flap. So a lot of animations somehow get this backwards but when the wings are going down, the body should be going up because he's pushing himself up. Think about, he's like basically doing push-ups on the air. That's scientific. You should listen to me. I'm a scientist of birds and things. Okay, so I went in uh, to the graph editor and converted these to easy ease, and I'm just gonna smooth this out a tiny bit. So we have this up and down, um, obviously it does not loop. So I'm gonna go back to aereference.com. I'm gonna type loop in and out, copy and option click on here, paste the expression. And now, as you can see, if we look at the graph editor, it loops in and out. So see how bad that looks? Now we just gotta play with the timing. So as the wings flap down, I think I, some, wait, did I get this backwards while I was talking about that whole thing? I totally did. All right, that's why I did this as three keyframes that loop. So as the wings flap down, we want this to move up. So he flies up, he drops down, flies up, there you go. It looks a little a little uh, cheesy, but we're getting there. All right, 
So now we're gonna add some more motion to the body. So I'm gonna search for the path. I just, the only reason I search is because to me it's faster than clicking these arrows and trying to find the path keyframes, especially if you have more than one thing to do. Let's see. I don't know how much a bird actually does move their body. I'm guessing they're probably not flapping all around, but I think when you're animating stuff, you can you can get a little, have a little bit of liberty. It's like the same reason you exaggerate positions in um, posing. You want to give a little bit more exaggeration, a little bit more life, because we know these things aren't alive. And by adding a little bit of exaggeration, you can um, make sure that you aren't getting a stiff animation. Anyway, that was a really well-worded way to say that. I'm just gonna add a little bit of flop in his bod. So as he comes down, I want maybe his, his tail to lag behind a little bit. And then here's something you can also do. I kinda wanna just grab some um, middle keyframes in here. So I'm gonna convert it back to linear. And you'll see how this looks. So he kind of flops around, go to this frame so we can watch the loop. So you can see the body's kind of wiggling a little bit. I think that adds a little more life to it. Um, and I'm just gonna go to every fourth frame, set a keyframe. So now we have evenly spaced keyframes and I'm going to toggle hold keyframe. Still a little jittery, but I think I think I want that because that's like kind of the style I'm going for. He's like a fast, frantic bird. Cool. So we are getting really close here. I'm going to go ahead and go back to AE references, grab the same loop path keyframes, copy it, and option click, paste that. So now everything is looping. You can go to any amount of seconds and it will loop beautifully. All right, I'm actually pretty happy with that. We have successfully animated a flapping wing bird. Now, how do we make this bird look like it's going fast? I'm gonna drag this into a new composition, um, which we're going to title bird flying bird. Oh, I almost started singing. That would have been bad for everyone. I'm gonna create a new null object. I'm gonna parent the bird to the null, call this bird null, because of the bird, duh. And that way we can move this bird around and we can do stuff to the underlying layer if we need to. I'm gonna create a new shape layer, double click the rectangle tool, that will add a shape that fills the background. And I'm gonna drag this, give it a nice dark, spooky color. Um, I'm gonna call this background. And then let's add some speed lines. This is where the speed comes from. So this is a little technique that I like to do um, that I kind of figured out on this project. So I'm gonna draw just two points with the path tool, which will create a um, nothing until you add a stroke let me get this like solid line on there. I'm gonna turn off the fill. Um, and then I'm gonna call this speed, because of speed, you get it? All right, and then I'm going to add a trim paths and I'm gonna trim the start down to be like, I don't know, 60%. And then if we animate the offset, you can see, um, let me zoom in here. You can see if we animate the offset, we're gonna get this line start to fly by. So I'm going to go here, add a keyframe at, I'm gonna make this so it's off screen. I'm gonna go forward maybe three seconds and just drag this back a lot. Um, if you hold down shift, you can make it drag more. And let's play, let's see what we got. I'm gonna close our work area to this. Okay, so you can start to see how if I had a bunch of these shapes, 
and they're all a little offset. So if I duplicate that shape, um, hit V, drag it down, maybe here. I'm gonna give some variation on the line. Um, maybe come over here, hit U to the keyframes and give it some variation on how many times it flies by. So that one's going a little faster. Okay, we're starting to get this little effect. I'm gonna drag this behind the bird. And then uh, let's do that same thing a couple times. Cool, so I'm gonna go through, I'm adding some variation to these so they don't all go the same pace. So now we got a little bit of variation throughout these. Now you might be saying, that looks pretty good, but nothing amazing. Well, we haven't gotten there yet, and that's what I say. So let's toggle this back down and click this arrow and add a wiggle paths. If I hit Command Shift H, it's gonna hide all those lines. That, I should have done that a while ago. So now we start to see a little bit of distortion in these. I'm gonna just mess with the size and detail until I get something. And then I'm gonna make the wiggles per second at 24 wiggles per second. So now you can see as they fly by, they're like wiggling around. That already is starting to give a little bit more chaos to the scene, which in my opinion is a good thing. So now here's the real key. And you know what? I should have done this before I duplicated all of these, but whatever. We're going to go down into these. Welcome to Toggle Arrow City in After Effects, where you have to just keep, keep toggling things. Um, I'm going to go down to the stroke and to taper. And let's find where we can see this. And I'm going to start adding on some taper. So I think I want these lines to have a pretty gnarly taper. And there we go. Now we're going to start to see some progress. If I copy this stroke, I can go to the other layers. Just click on the stroke, and paste it, so I don't have to do all those settings again. That's starting to look pretty fast, but we're not done yet. So the next thing you can do is duplicate this. We're going to Command Shift H so we can see our layers again. I'm just gonna drag this, and then I'm gonna get in here and start messing with those paths again. We'll flip them, and we'll drag them this way, and we'll just, we'll give some variation to these things. Okay. I'm gonna change this to a different color, maybe like a grayish blue. And this other one, I'm gonna make a darker, a little more faded into the background. Now we're starting to get a little bit of that speed line look. I think actually these could all be faster. So I'm gonna hit U, I'm gonna grab all of these keyframes, I'm gonna drag these in. And then, option click on here, type loop out, and then right click, copy expression only, select the rest of these offsets, and paste. So now they all loop, and then I'm gonna drag even a little bit of variation with these puppies. It's looking fast, it's feeling pretty fast. Um, if you wanna fade them a little bit more, psh, just drag the opacity down. What do you think, got time to change colors? Heck no. The last thing I'm gonna do to make this feel even more faster so I'm gonna create a new null object. I'm gonna call this camera, because it's kinda of gonna be acting like our camera. And I'm gonna parent our bird null and our speed to the camera null. Okay, so now I wanna add some camera shake to this. How do you do that? I like to do that by hitting P and going to position. This is straight up from one of the maybe like the first Andrew Kramer video copilot tutorial. Pretty sure I learned this on that video and I use it all the time since then. So I'm gonna write an expression on here. Um, wiggle F A. And I, you might be wondering, 
what is f and a? Well, here, I'm going to type that out. Type f equals and a equals, but we don't have anything to attach that to. Um, you'll see why I'm doing this. I'm going to attach these numbers instead of hard coding. I'm going to attach these numbers to a expression control slider control. I'm going to call this one frequency and this one amp for amplitude. And then I'll go back into this expression that is yelling at me because of these errors and attach F to frequency and A to amplitude. Now we've got these sliders that we can keyframe and so we can adjust our wiggle, which will randomly shake this, this camera. We can adjust it with these sliders. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this 24 wiggles per second, which is a crazy amount. I'm gonna make this like 10. Just to add like, so if you were filming a bird flying at this speed, you'd probably have a little bit of wobble in the camera because this bird is clearly going like 200 miles an hour. Um, and to me, that just adds a little bit of extra kapow that I like. And maybe we can make this 20 or 12 and make eight. We'll go a little more subtle here. Usually subtle is not my middle name. All right, so that's feeling pretty fast to me. What happens if we want to add a little snap zoom in there? So like at one second, we hit S, we can um, hit P and S. If you hold shift, it'll open both of them. We'll go like two keyframes. I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit. Just gonna convert those to easy ease. Oh yeah, look at that snap zoom. That's a good camera, man. What can I say? And then if we hit this collapse transformations, little asterisk um, on the bird, it will keep this super sharp no matter what scale we get it. I don't know guys, this is feeling pretty fast to me. Uh, I'm going to set a keyframe here and make sure by the end of this, we are back at our starting position, copy paste and Back at our starting scale, copy, paste. Boom, hey, it's that's looking pretty good to me. You can add extra stuff, like in the first version I did of this, I um, added a section where it went into slow motion, which I thought was kind of cool, because slow motion is sick, bro. And there we go. We've got a fun bird flapping, bird flying animation. We added some speed lines to make them feel fast. Again, we can do our thing where we add an, an adjustment layer, um, add a hue saturation, uh, change the color, change the saturation, colorize it. You know, we can make this look however we want. Oh, it's kind of cool. It's getting that back wing. I didn't mean to get that layer in there, but that looks pretty sweet, actually. You know, happy accident. That was the process um, showing you how to animate a bird with path keyframes, frame by frame, on twos, using just clicking, setting keyframes, nothing fancy in this one, but using some expressions, using some After Effects trickery, just shape layers, you can get a really powerful feeling. All those little things like adding camera shake, various little wiggles and stuff to create the illusion of speed. I think those are really useful things that will, I don't know, help you out in other projects too. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want some more. You can find me over on Twitter at It's the Only Chris, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.